going to be tying up a soft tackle fly today. This is another one that I plan on doing for the tie-a-thon that I'm going to be participating in this spring. The uh, last couple of videos I did on the partridge in yellow and the black midge, both of those mentioned the tie-a-thon and there will be some information in the description for this video. But this is the gray hackle yellow. It's a very interesting fly. It is a very old pattern, been around a long time. I don't know that it was necessarily around in this particular version, but Ray Bergman mentioned it in his book, Trout, uh, along with, I guess, its cousin, which is the gray hackle peacock, and uh, which essentially is tied the exact same way. It's just instead of the yellow floss, it's a peacock body. But it's a very productive fly. Like I said, it's been around a lot. If you do a search on the internet, it's interesting. You're gonna find um, a number of different variations and modifications to this for different conditions and different situations. Uh, one of the most frequent that I find is that instead of the tag or even in addition to the tag, there is a tail of say red hackle fibers or even um, duck red duck slips. Um, as well as the body sometimes is made out of wool or even dubbing instead of floss on this. What I found in a lot of books Two books that I have, Patent Patterns by Jim Schollmeyer. I think, I hope I pronounced that correct, as well as this one, the Fly Patterns of um Umqua Feather Merchants. And I'll have pictures in the video of, of both of these. It's interesting because both of them have this tied in, similar to this. I don't think there's a tail with it, but they use a grizzly hackle. Um, tied in instead of the gray hackle. But as I said, if you look online, you'll also see some variations where people have tied this as like a dry fly. It has a very, very bushy, kind of like a, a wolf collar or something on it so that it's a dry fly. So just goes to show patterns that have been around a long, long time get tied in many different ways. But that's the Gray Hackle Yellow, um, a couple of interesting applications of materials on this. I think it's worth noting and we'll go ahead and get started. yellow by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 3906 hook in a size 12. This is a standard nymph hook, meaning it has a little bit heavier wire to it. A classic wet fly hook would be like a Mustad 3399. You can certainly use that if you want. It's a little bit lighter wire hook. After I debarb the hook, I'm going to attach my thread. I'm using two different threads for this fly. The first one is an 8 aught uni in white. This is going to be put down as a base for the yellow floss because if I have a black thread under the yellow floss, it's going to darken up that yellow floss and I want to keep that color as bright as I can. I'm going to attach my thread about a half an eye length behind the eye of the hook and just go back half a dozen turns just to secure that thread. Now I'm going to tie in what will be the tag and the rib. I'm using a Danville Mylar tinsel. This is a gold and silver Mylar tinsel in a size 16 and 18, which is the smallest that they have. I want to take my tinsel and attach it to the hook with the silver side up. I'm going to bring it underneath the thread with the silver side away from me, and as you can see, it brings it to where the silver side is right on top of the hook. I'll pull the tinsel to my left towards the bend of the hook simply to reduce the tag that sticks out there. That will be covered up where the hackle and the head is end up, going to end up being. I'm going to wrap down the hook shank in touching turns. This is going to give me a nice smooth underbody for the floss body of this fly. The body will extend all the way down to the end of the shank, which is 
generally right between the point of the hook and the point of the barb. But we have a tag on this of tinsel, and that's going to go down just the bend just a little bit. So I'm going to put an extra probably six to eight wraps of thread going down the bend of the hook just a little bit. And that's where my tag is going to go in. I'll wrap my thread forward to right at the end of the body, which is right between the point of the hook and the point of the barb. For the body, I'm using the four strand Danville four strand rayon floss. This is in a yellow. However, I'm only going to be using two strands for this. One strand is actually going to be the body, and then one strand is going to be used as what's called a keeper, which I will explain in just a moment. I'm going to wrap these apply these to the hook, similar to the tinsel, I'm going to bring it up under the thread, secure it on top, put in three or four or five wraps just to secure that the back end of the body. Then I'm going to trim away the excess, generally the length of the body. I'll add in some more wraps, nice touching turns to give myself a nice smooth underbody bring my thread right up to the end of the body so I can apply the floss. I'm going to take my strand that I'm going to use for the body. And I'm going to start to apply it. You'll notice that I'm kind of stroking it and putting it under tension as I bring it around that very first wrap. What that does, it gets all these fibers under the same tension. So now, when I am wrapping this in, it is much less likely to start spreading out as I work my way up the shank of the hook. I put these in, and the wraps are going to over, overlap each previous wrap about halfway. This will give me a nice, uniform, smooth body, but it'll be a nice, solid yellow color. I won't have any of the white thread showing through. Secure that with three wraps. Trim away the excess. The body on this fly is actually tied very similar to a number of wet fly patterns, even though this is considered a soft hackle fly. The floss bodies on a lot of wet flies, the problem that they have is the floss will actually start to loosen up and slip down the bend of the hook. Especially if you have um, a number of wet fly patterns actually utilize uh, the tag is made out of, say, a bright floss or something. And um, if you just have a few wraps in there and it's very sparse, very easily can just unravel a little bit, even after you got the fly totally done, and start sliding down the bend of the hook. To prevent that, one of the things you can do is have another piece of floss that's called a keeper. What that is, is it's simply folded over and tied in on the top. You could even tie it in on the bottom if you want. And then once that's wrapped in and trimmed off, you now have one bit of floss that comes underneath the other wraps and over, and it just keeps these wraps back here from slipping down the bend of the hook. I'm going to smooth this off just a little bit. Now I'm going to apply the tinsel for the tag as well as the ribbing of the body. I could with the, fly, the, the hook in this position here, I could go ahead and start to apply that. And you'll notice, this is why I tied it with the silver side up, because when I come across, it's gonna be the gold side that's up. It flips over. If I tie it with the hook in this position, though, I have to work around the point of the hook, each wrap, as well as get the thread out of the way. And sometimes, as you can see right there, your, your wraps are, you're gonna loosen up and get loose, or it's, you're gonna lose tension. And, and granted, if you learn to tie them that way and you do enough of them, 
you work around it. It's not a big deal. But one thing I learned long ago with a rotary vise, it's kind of nice, is you can just flip it over. And when you do, all of your wraps are actually kind of coming in at an angle anyway. Now you're right out of the way of the point, and it's very easy that you don't even have to really move the thread out of the way. So I'll start applying that as my tag. Generally, I get about four to five wraps to produce the tag, and then when I'm coming onto the floss body, I spread those out. I want to have five even space wraps on that floss body for the rib on our gray hackle yellow. You always want to make certain you're keeping thread tension when you're tying especially this mylar in, if it gets loose underneath, it's just going to all unravel. You have to go all the way back to the beginning and start over again. With the excess removed, I'll clean that up by moving my thread down to behind the eye of the hook. And now I'm going to change threads. This is where I'm going to switch to a black thread. This is an 8 aught uni in black. This will be for the head portion of the fly. I'm simply going to attach my thread right behind the eye of the hook and then wrap backwards just to the back where the hackle is going to be palmered in and then have just a very small head up in the front. For the hackle on this, I'm using a Whiting American hackle. This is a hen hackle saddle. Um, in gray. You could use others if you want. Um, one thing I have noticed is um, if you do some searches, these patterns, there's a lot of different variations to these patterns. And even some traditional books talk about using a, um, a grizzly hackle. So that is an option. If you don't happen to have a, uh, a nice a hen neck like this, that's fine. Just your average hen neck that's gray will work. Um, you could also use a partridge hackle or something like that. The hackles on these are a little bit longer. They're not quite as uh, round as um, standard hen hackles. However, I've got shorter barbs up here towards the tip. Get these out so you can see. I've got longer ones in the middle, and then they get a little shorter again, but into all this fluffy and, and more webby fibers here. What you want to look for is you want to have the barbs about the length of the hook. I like them to come just to the bend of the hook, maybe a little bit past or a little shorter, it's up to you. So these right up here would be just a little bit short, whereas these a little further down are going to be a little too long right in this area right here, gonna to be too long. So keep in mind also, we're only gonna be using just a, a very short section of this feather as we're not looking for a real bushy collar, we're looking for something that's going to be a little sparser. So I'm gonna peel away all these fibers here that I don't need. I'm gonna leave my feather looking like this. I'll take my small hackle pliers, I'm going to grab the tip of that hackle. So we're going to tie it in by the tip. Now notice if I grab just the tip of the hackle there, all of these fibers are what I would be wrapping in for a collar, and that's going to be too uh, full. I don't want that much on there. I have two options. I could potentially remove all the barbs from this side here, and then I'd have half and I'd have a more sparse collar, or I could also just take my hackle pliers and reach further down on the stem of that feather. And now I'm only going to have these fibers here as the ones that are wrapped in for the collar. I'm gonna clip this off so I have just a little triangle like that. And to give me just something to hold on to to tie that tip in. I'll wrap that in, nice touching turns, about a half dozen wraps to get up behind the eye of the hook, and that hackle is nice and secured. Grabbing my hackle pliers, 
I will start to stroke these fibers back, trying to fold those back a little bit, and then start polymering this around the hook. Just take your time with it. You don't want to pull too hard. You don't want to pull it out. Just wrap those in. You're only going to get two to maybe three wraps as you wrap those all the way down. At this stage, all the hackle fibers, or I should say the barbs, are, are wrapped in, so I'm going to make the head. I'm going to fold the stem back. And then I'm going to start wrapping from the eye backwards, just making a small head to the fly. It does not need to be pronounced at all. Three turn whip finish. We'll finish the fly off. I can take that stem, just pop it right off. Now before I apply any head cement, I like to try and get the fibers standing out a little bit more perpendicular, I should say the barbs, because most of your soft tackles, that's what you're looking for, is these longer barbs that are sticking out, splayed out like legs and things like that on a either a little emerging bug or a little drowned bug or something like that. The process of sweeping those back and holding them back to make the head tends to flatten them down. So I like to bring those out. Because then I'm going to apply my head cement, which is a fly tight head cement. It's a thin down head cement that when I put it on here, it's going to soak right down into those thread wraps and into the base of those hackle fibers. So it will secure those hackle fibers a little bit, sticking out a little bit more from the hook shank in a more perpendicular angle. So there is the gray hackle yellow. Very similar to wet flies in the body construction on this, and uh, but it's just a fun this is a fun little uh, soft hackle fly to tie. As I said, you could substitute in the hackle a grizzly hackle or probably a guinea hackle also would work well. In Ray Bergman's book, Trout, he talks about this fly in conjunction with the gray hackle peacock. And he talks about both of those patterns. There's variations. People have fished where they use teal and uh, grizzly hackle on those as opposed to just a gray hackle. Fun little fly to have in your box, uh, just as much fun to tie at the vise. And that's the gray hackle yellow. Thanks for joining me at the vise today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.